The Congo Basin is located in equatorial Africa. It is one of the most biodiverse places on the planet. Its dense forests contain innumerable plants and animals, and these jungles have historically hidden things from the rest of the world. In the early 1900s, both the lowland gorilla and the okapi were first discovered there by the Western world. Both of these animals were treated as legend and fiction before their discovery. There were rumors of another creature living in the Congo Basin that began around the same time. A creature many people believed was displaced by time. In one of the local dialects, it is known as Emila Notoka, or Eater of Tops of Trees. It is a name in another dialect that this creature is best known, Makele Mbembe. It is a creature that has resisted discovery, a creature that endures in rumor and legend until even today. And it forever lives in our hearts for what people claim this creature is. A living dinosaur. In late 1981, an expedition led by Herman Regusters hiked miles into the Republic of Congo to reach a large lake known as Lac Telly. Lac Telly is a large elliptical lake with a diameter of five kilometers. Its waters are filled with organic material and are impossible to see through past a few inches. The lake is surrounded by a forest swamp that is difficult to explore. This endures even to today. Ragusters, an aerospace engineer from Jet Propulsion Labs, embarked on this expedition to investigate, as he called it, the rumors concerning a strange animal in the Republic of Congo. He was joined in this endeavor by his wife, a small group of people brought along, including a professional photographer and a scientific team from the Congolese government. Ragusters' goal was to apply as much modern science as he could to search for the Makele Ebembe. Several days after their arrival on the shores of Lac Telly, the expedition had their first sighting of what they believed was the Makele Ebembe. The party observed what they described as a long-necked creature swimming a moderate distance away from them. They observed this creature for about five minutes before it disappeared beneath the waters. This was witnessed by every member of the party except, oddly enough, the photographer. The team had a handful of shorter sightings over the next few days. Then Ragusters and his wife heard a mysterious roar from inside the jungle. None of the natives or the naturalists in the parties were able to identify this roar. Ragusters was able to get a recording. time at Lac Telly, the party claimed to have several sightings of their creature, one as close as 30 meters. However, they were never able to get a photograph, save for a grainy photo of what Ragusters claimed was the nearly submerged head of the creature. Ragusters returned to the United States and submitted an official report to the California Institute of Technology. He had hoped his findings would result in funding for a second expedition, but none came. In this report, Ragusters was careful to say that his creature was an unidentified creature that resembled a dinosaur, not that it was a dinosaur. However, less than four years later, Ragusters released another report where his tune had changed. He now believed a dinosaur resided in modern-day Lac Telly. Of course, there's a lot to unpack from a claim like that. One, there are living dinosaurs, 
The birds we see and hear every day are, in fact, dinosaurs, avian dinosaurs. They never went extinct. However, it is the non-avian dinosaurs, those large four-legged giants, those are the ones who are no longer among us. And two, the first reports of the Michele Ebembe reached the Western world in 1909. These reports coincided for what can be described as a dinosaur fever that was being experienced by the Western world. Everyone just couldn't get enough of dinosaurs. And it is odd that the creature resembled what science thought of sauropods at the time. A large, long-necked dinosaur that had to live in the water just to support its massive size. That perspective has long since changed to a point that the Michele Abembe really doesn't compare to it at all. So, it might be reasonable to say that there is some large creature living in the Congo, but to call it a dinosaur just has no basis in reality. And to address the creature's actual existence, it's worth remembering that there have been plenty of expeditions that have set out to discover the Michele Abembe, and no compelling evidence has been found that is any better than the one grainy picture and the recording of a roar that isn't even proven to come from the suspected creature, much less anything else. So the official stance for the existence of the Michele Abembe should be as it is for most cryptids. It most likely didn't exist, but it would be pretty cool if it did. And do remember that dinosaurs do still exist. Heck, if you need to see them, please check out my Backyard Birds weekly videos. There's plenty of avian dinosaurs there. It's always disappointing to lose something like the Michele Abembe. Some giant creature out there just waiting to be seen and discovered. But it's important to remember that there is so much still out there. So many wonderful things that do exist, and so many wonderful things that we still just have not discovered yet. And like I've said before, that beastie might still be out there for us, waiting in the dark. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Uh, I had a real blast making that video. Uh, I tried to keep it simple and to the point, but I mean, I gotta tell you, I found the entire uh, Vagusters expedition just absolutely fascinating, and I think it's something I definitely want to revisit in the future. So, no promises when, but it is something I'm gonna do a video on. Uh, Along those lines, I want to thank uh, Darren Nash and Tyler Greenfield for, one, humoring me on Twitter, and two, pointing me in the right direction for some things. Uh, there are tremendous uh, presences as far as online with, uh, for dinosaurs and cryptozoology, and I'll put links to their stuff in the description below. Um, yeah, and... Uh, so this is our third installment for October, which apparently is just going to be cryptozoology. I'm always going to do creepy things, but it seems to be cryptozoology. I don't know what I'm going to do next week. I got a few days to figure it out. Uh, circling back to the Congo, um, we did just have the... Yesterday, actually, was National or World Okapi Day. And I mentioned in the videos, a copy is a, is a uh, creature that kind of resembles a mix between a horse and a giraffe that lives in the Congo. And, uh, you know, th their habitat is being lost daily. And I do think, or I ask you to go ahead and check out the, the website. I should have had this prepared. Okapiconservation.org, uh, the Okapi Conservation Project, which I'll also link below. That you check it out, educate yourself, donate if you can. Um, yeah, that's it. I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you later.